It was six years ago this week when whipping winds rushed across the state with gusts topping 60 miles per hour. This caused widespread damage and more than a million homes and businesses to lose power. Bill Steffen joins us from his man cave today to talk about this. So Bill, these winds swept through on what was a pretty nice and sunny day. That is for sure, and it's kind of deceiving when we have a day like this. Normally when we get 50 to 70 mile an hour winds, the uh, lightning is flashing, we get freezing rain or blizzard conditions or something like that, but this time we had 100% sunshine in Grand Rapids. There were a few scattered clouds east of Grand Rapids, but uh, otherwise it was a beautiful day out there with a lot of blue sky. But these winds were fierce. Statewide we had winds like this, and that contributed to the high number of power outages. Uh, there was a, a wind advisory for the Mac Bridge where they had wind gusts there that were so strong that they prohibited trucks from coming across the bridge. So uh, indeed a statewide event. And what was tough about this is that with all the power outages that we had with this event, uh, we also had the strong winds in Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio, neighboring states. So they were unable to send a lot of crews up here to help us out. So it took a long time to get everybody uh, back online after this event. I remember this day very well, Bill, because I lost three mature trees in my yard and so did so many of my neighbors. What kind of damage do you remember specifically about this windstorm? Well, probably the biggest damage that uh, we saw was uh, the opera house, the old Nash opera house that had its roof blown off and walls, uh, uh, one wall blown out. That's in the town of Clarksville. Clarksville is in uh, eastern Ionia County, excuse me, in southwestern Ionia County. And I used to stop for ice cream there when I was coming back from the Lansing area. So it's a nice little town. Uh, this building is an older building and uh, had been in uh, various use since the days of the Opera House. I think uh, the library was in there at the current time. But they were very fortunate that when that roof blew off and the bricks blew down in the street that they did not get a passing car. There were two fatalities with this uh, wind event up on M115 in Clare County. Uh, take 115 uh, up toward the Cadillac area uh, and there the two fatalities occurred when the uh, limb uh, fell on the car so this was uh, and there were a number of injuries with this as well uh, fortunately no one in Kent County here was hurt there were a number of uh, homes that lost shingles and there were a number of semis that were tipped over got to be real careful especially if you're running empty when you get a day with strong winds like this. Yeah, and Bill, more than a million power outages as a result, that's a ton. Do you recall how many utility poles and wires were brought down? Well, we had about 8,000 wires that were brought down. You, you figure that the consumers might have hundreds of crews out working to restore power, but 8,000 wires is gonna take a long time. There were a thousand poles that needed to be replaced. And uh, of course that takes some time too, especially in March, uh, some of the ground may still be frozen at that time. Tough to get through. We had wave spray at Lake Michigan that was 50 feet high as the waves were hitting the lighthouses out there. And uh, also we had a number of people that had trampolines blow out of their yards into the neighbor's yard as well. If you get a day when there's gonna be strong winds, it's a good idea to turn that trampoline upside down, less apt to uh, move into the next uh, neighborhood. We always get good pictures of that. The wind also caused some travel challenges, especially for the University of Michigan men's basketball team. Boy, and this was a scary event over at Willow Run Airport, which is over in the Detroit area. The Michigan men's basketball team was taking off to go to the Big Ten tournament, which was that, in, that year in Washington, D.C. Uh, as the plane get, uh, started going, and we were getting wind gusts to about 53 miles an hour at the Willow Run Airport, and the combination of the wind and a mechanical issue caused the pilot to abort the takeoff. He had already reached 158 miles an hour, and in fact, at the end of the runway, the plane was still going 115 miles an hour. It continued for about another 950 feet, so that's about three lengths of a football field beyond the runway. Fortunately, Beyond the runway, there was just a fence, which uh, slowed down the plane just a little bit. Uh, there were 109 passengers on board and a crew of six. There was one minor injury, but boy, this should uh, tell you that uh, when you're taking off and landing in an airplane, you got to put that seatbelt on, as that uh, uh, certainly uh, contributed to the fact that there was only that one minor injury. And I believe that injury was in somebody that was uh, jumping off the plane at the time. But uh, that runway was extended back in, uh, I think, around uh, 2008 or so. They extended the runway, and that, of course, was positive there. But the team got to Washington, D.C., and eventually won the Big Ten tournament.
I remember that day so well now. Thank you for remembering with us again, Bill Steffen from the Man Cave.